Hello friends, Dan's is coming out with a test and discussion based on the NEAT pattern. The, uh, the questions in this uh, TND will be uh, hand-picked by a highly experienced faculty. Just to give you a feel of the kind of questions which are going to be, which will be asked in this test and discussion. This is a physiology question. Clearance of para-aminohypuric acid is used to determine. Now, um, when you look at the clearance of para, para-aminohypuric acid in a low concentration, what is a, what is low concentration? This is less than 20 milligrams per deciliter. Para-aminohypuric acid in a low concentration is a freely filtered and completely secreted substance. Freely filtered and completely secreted. And that is why we take the clearance of para-aminohypuric acid. We take the clearance of para-aminohypuric acid as equal to the renal plasma flow. It is freely filtered and completely secreted. If you can see this over here, this is the Bowman's capsule. This is the afferent arteriole capillaries and the efferent arteriole. So supposing I have, let's say, the amount of uh, para-aminohypuric acid, the afferent arteriole is 100. 20% is filtered and the 80% which is left in the peritubular capillaries is going to be secreted so that I have 100% in the urine. This is what I mean by when I say para-aminohypuric acid in low concentration is free is freely filtered and completely secreted. Freely filtered and completely secreted. The um, uh, if I uh, now this secretion of para-aminohypuric acid which occurs in the PCT, this secretion is a carrier mediated secretion. And when I say carrier mediated secretion, that means there is a transport maxima which is present. All carrier mediated secretions have a maximum rate of transport. And so para aminohypuric acid also has a transport maxima. That therefore, para aminohypuric acid in high concentration, in high concentration, and when I say high concentration, that means more than 20 milligrams per deciliter, this is incompletely secreted. This is going to be incompletely secreted. We can only take para-aminohypuric acid in a low concentration, clearance of para-aminohypuric acid in low concentration for uh, assessment of renal plasma flow. So if I extrapolate this at the level of the kidney as an as a organ, if this is the kidney and the ureta here, right? This is the renal vein. So, um, if I have, now this is the renal artery, if I have 100 of para-aminohypuric acid, now this is para-aminohypuric acid in low concentration, right? So if I have 100 in the renal artery, now going by whatever we've just discussed, I expect 100 in the urine and zero in the renal vein. Para-aminohypuric acid in a low concentration is freely filtered and completely secreted. Now, but in, 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 Practically, this is not what we see. We find 90 in the urine and 10 in the renal vein. What I'm trying to point out is, when you look at the nephron level, this picture is absolutely true. At the level of the kidney, this is also true. So how do I explain this difference? Why is it that at the level of the kidney, I'm not able to remove 100% of para-aminohypuric acid from the renal artery? And we call this para-aminohypuric acid para-aminohypuric acid has an extraction ratio. Para-aminohypuric acid has an extraction ratio. And therefore, what is extraction ratio? Now, extraction ratio is the arterial concentration, arterial concentration minus the venous concentration divided by the arterial concentration. Arterial concentration minus the venous concentration divided by arterial concentration. So arterial concentration is 10 divided by venous minus the venous concentration. Uh, arterial concentration is 100 minus 10 divided by arterial concentration, which is 100. So this makes it 90 divided by 100 or 0 0.9 or 90 percent. This is what is meant by extraction ratio. The kidney is able to extract 90% of the para-aminohypuric acid even when para-aminohypuric acid is in a low concentration. Now the question arises, why does, why does para-aminohypuric acid have 
an extraction ratio. And that is also pretty simple to understand and that is the uh, complete renal artery blood is not participating in filtration. What happens is a small percentage of the renal artery blood goes towards the renal capsule. After all, renal capsule is also living tissue. It needs a blood supply. So a small amount of the renal artery blood is going towards the renal capsule, towards the adipose tissue which surrounds the kidney. And this para-aminohipuric acid will be returned in the renal vein. So para-aminohipuric acid has an extraction ratio. Has an extraction ratio. This is because the complete renal artery blood is not participating in filtration. There is a small amount of the renal artery blood which, it, which goes towards the capsule, towards the adipose tissue which surrounds the kidney and this para-aminohipuric acid will be returned in the renal vein. So therefore, uh, if para-aminohipuric acid has an extraction ratio uh, of 0 0.9, so here and now, now on the background of all this information, now let's try and answer this question. Now this says clearance of para aminohipuric acid is used to determine and my answer becomes it determines the effective renal plasma flow not the actual. Why? Because there is because para aminohipuric acid has an extraction ratio. When the complete para aminohipuric acid is not being filtered uh, the clearance of para aminohipuric acid is not will not be uh, I will not be able to get an actual renal plasma flow. If I uh, want the actual renal plasma flow, I will take the effective renal plasma flow and divide it by 0 0.9. That will give me the actual renal plasma flow. And if I want to use the blood plasma flow to calculate the renal blood flow, how do I do that? For that, I need hematocrit. So this will be 100 over 100 minus hematocrit into the renal plasma flow. This is, uh, this briefly is how uh, we can use the clearance of para-aminohipuric acid to determine the effective renal plasma flow.